And you know the irony of all of this is, is that you know places like Ireland. They were calling it the Celtic Tide. That's right. That's <laughs> because, right. you know, that was the place to go. That's right. Not, to invest. Not many years ago. That, right. Not many years not many ago years to ago. invest and this and that. Right. And now Ireland, you know, is not in that much better shape than Greece. Right. You know, and um, so. Let me add another wrinkle to this mm -hmm. and then we move on to the mm -hmm. second part. Right, right, right. The same. Um, from what. I can tell, and, and, and not that I've paid a lot of attention over the years to uh, financial institutions and what they've been doing in right. other countries. However, I do know that it seems that these very same austerity measures and the different policies that the World Bank and the IMF want Greece to put into place, mm -hmm. uh, those are the same things they ask third world countries to put into place. Right. Um, so they could get loans. Right. And during all these years, let's say over the past 20, 30 years, mm -hmm. when these other countries, there were not Western countries, there were not developed countries, mm -hmm. none of those countries cared that that's what was happening right. to these developing countries. Right. And, and many times, if I remember correctly, uh, on people were paying, these countries were paying back on the principal, not, not even... Uh, I, I guess I'm sorry on the on service, the, on the, the debt, service, right. not even on the principal. Right. More than they were, more than they were spending money, maybe on healthcare, That's right. or they were spending on education. So now what's happening is these banks and the people who control these things, these financial institutions, what they perfected on the third world countries. That's right. They're now using That's on, right. on <laughs> Western That's countries, right. um, and eventually, it's going to be us, possibly. Right. Right, right. That's right. So, so the second part of the question, and, and you can speak to that too. But the second part of the question is, you you talked about defaulting. Mm -hmm. Well, what is happening here in this country? Because there's a big debate going on right now right. in Congress right. about uh, how much money to raise the debt ceiling. Right. And that if they don't raise it, then we'll be in default. That's right. Right. And Greece hasn't even been in default yet, and they're right. going through hell. Right. So, what do you think about? that are, what's going on in Congress and what is the prospect in your mind of what's going to fall and what would that mean, do you think? I, I think uh, before too long, they are the U.S. is going to raise the debt ceiling. Yeah. I think they are. And I think, uh, you know, more level heads than those in the Tea Party, <laughs> you know, don't want the government to fail, don't want the government to have to shut down, don't want the government to go into default. But I think what's going on now in Congress is a kind of horse trading session. You know, the president wants to raise the debt ceiling. Okay, if we raise the debt ceiling, we want cuts in entitlement programs. They're going after these quote unquote entitlements. Right. And you know what they are. They're like Medicare, That's Medicaid. Right. That's right. You know, That's they right. want to privatize Social Security. That's they right. want to do all kind of weird things, voucher programs right. and Social Security and right. all kind of all kind of crazy schemes. That's right. And um, so uh, I think that, you know, we need to look at what's happening in Greece and in the rest of the world. And we need to start organizing here our fight back That's effort. Right. We should not wait until we're faced with the same set of choices that the people of Greece are faced with right at this moment. Right. We should start organizing now uh, the fight back effort uh, to, to keep this crisis from being balanced on the backs of the working class and the middle class right. uh, in this country. You know, I think that we are getting ready to go into a period of, um, of civil activity. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, the next few years we're going to see more and more of what we saw in Wisconsin, you know, and what we saw the other day even in Trenton, New Jersey, right. when the workers, eight, nine, ten thousand marched down on the state legislature, even though they didn't win that fight, right. you know. And it was just a shame, it was heartbreaking to see uh, many of the Democrats, right. even some of the Democratic leaders, you know, support Christie's uh, proposals, legislative proposals, to reduce these pensions and uh, benefits uh, and rights of the, of the state workers right. and the public sector workers here. My hope is that 
well, let's put it this way, we're going to lose battles before we win battles. But we have to keep fighting right. in order ultimately to win. And my hope is that people don't get so discouraged that they drop out of the fight. It's going to be a long, you know, uh, slow, uh, 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 plodding forward, you know, till we can see some victories. You know, I, I, I could see, you know, how discouraged people were after the vote in the New Jersey State Legislature. But um, as Mother Jones said, don't mourn, organize. Okay. <laughs> you know, we got to organize. And uh, just like the people in Greece out in the streets, the people of the U.S. better get out in the right. streets. Right. You know, I mean, look at, look at what's happening. I mean, we don't have to look at Greece. We can look at... Plainfield, New Jersey, where they closed the only hospital in Plainfield, which was the major employer in the city of Plainfield. So not only does Plainfield not have its only hospital, it has an economic black hole mm -hmm. because all the hundreds of people that worked for that hospital were left jobless. You know, uh, they closed two hospitals here. Uh, in, Newark, in Newark, New Jersey, they closed St. James and they closed Columbus Hospital. You know, uh, I mean, we're closing hot. We've closed more hospitals in the last five years than the previous 25 years in New Jersey. We're closing libraries. We're closing schools. You know, um, uh, we're laying off. I mean, the city of Newark laid off several hundred police. With the, with the crime rate that we have in Newark, can we afford right. to lay off police? That's right. That's right. You know, I mean, I'm all for, you know, community uh, patrols yes. and, 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 and volunteer right. police. I'm all for that. It only goes so far. It only goes so far. Right. That's right. You know, if you got a lot of criminal activities, a criminal got guns, you can't throw unarmed volunteers right. at them, you know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, so this is, I've never seen it. I never have seen it like this uh, before. When they start laying off cops, you know we're in trouble. Right. That's true. Because <laughs> cops true. are the last to get laid right. off. Well, it's like um, they're the ones who are supposed to protect property from the masses. That's right. So if you're laying off cops, then, you know, it, that says something about what even the, the power structure itself, whatever the, the people right. that control the status quo, um, That's right. what they're thinking, That's what right. they're doing. So, um, well, I would like to visit with you again later right, on in about right. two or three weeks. So I got a daily thing. Right, way. how that's going and what happens in Congress. Because I'm going to tell you real quick and then we'll end. I'm not too sure if uh, the debt ceiling is going to be raised. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's not. You right. know, it's probably a 50-50 chance. Right. One of the reasons I say that is because all these negotiations, I, I heard this, so I'm not going to try to take credit for right, this. Right, I heard right. this on one of the pundits talking right, about this. Right, it makes right, sense right, to me. Right. He said that all the negotiations are taking place behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. So neither one, and, and, and both parties have some principles, however anybody feels about them, right. that, that they're trying to stand on. Right. You know, so the, the Republicans don't want any tax hikes or mm -hmm. something that might not be a tax hike, like closing the loophole, mm -hmm. for example, it's not mm -hmm. necessarily a tax hike. But they don't want anything that's going to take away from uh, people's money, from their income, right. um, even the rich. And then Democrats don't want to cut this so much, right? Because their constituencies will be really pissed off right. at them for that. That's right. All right. So, but if you're doing if you're doing negotiations behind closed doors and you really haven't aired out your position in front of the people, mm -hmm. then you really don't know where the people are on what you're saying. Right. You know. So if both sides believe, which they possibly do, that they have the win in hand, like Republicans might believe that. Most people in the United States don't want the debt ceiling raised unless they get some cuts. Mm -hmm. And the Democrats might really believe that people really don't want them to negotiate without getting some raising the taxes. Then neither one of them mm -hmm. might be willing to, to negotiate because at the end of the day, they know somebody's going to be blamed for it. Okay. You know, and that'll get them into power or keep them in power. Right. Because you know how all. Both sides, what it's really about, it's not about me and you. Right. It's about gaining power or maintaining power. Right. Right. So there's this possibility, possibly like never before, that 
if it gets, it, I, I believe it'll get raised, but it might go right up to mm -hmm. the deadline. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is that the um, financial markets might get so spooked by getting so close right. that we might have some kind of domino effect. Mm -hmm. Even though we don't even, even though we don't default. That's right. And then if we default, that's a whole nother, right? That's a whole nother story. So I guess, you know, we have to see, but I'm just, right. we have to wait and see. Yeah. But, but we need to get prepared. And we yes. get prepared by getting organized, right? You know, and, and, and getting involved in the fight. And I just want to invite people, uh, first of all, in general, urge people to get involved with an organization that is fighting for justice on the ground, in the community. But I also want to invite people to get involved with the People's Organization for Progress, right? right? Um, we meet every Thursday at 6.30 at the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 224 West Kenny Street in Newark. Every Thursday at 6.30. And now we have this daily picket. That's right. You know, every day, 4.30 at um, the Lincoln Monument at West Kenny and uh, Springfield Avenue, excuse me, at West Market and Springfield Avenue uh, in Newark. So if people come to either one of those places, they can find out how to get involved or they can call People's Organization for Progress at 973-801-0001. And you can go to njpop.org. There you go. NJ, www.njpop.org. And see some good pictures. All right. <laughs> All right, Larry. Thank you so much.